Pulse field ablation has many, many variables that can be changed that will affect the efficiency and the safety uh, of the device. So you can play with the number of pulses, uh, the amplitude, uh, the polarity, uh, the way it is delivered. And then, of course, when you talk about different catheters, electrode size, electrode spacing, number of electrodes, et cetera, et cetera. So we should all be very aware that pulse field ablation does not equal pulse field ablation. Uh, every single device has to be evaluated on its own for safety and efficacy. My name is Boris Schmidt. I'm an electrophysiologist in Frankfurt. Now, with the availability of pulse field ablation, we're truly entering a new era of catheter ablation. We are really excited to be part of this journey because I think the speed of evolution in the field of electrophysiology has slowed down a little bit, and now we are resetting the clock and uh, accelerating it. One of our key philosophies was always being open-minded towards changes towards new technologies. And that's why during our career, we've evaluated multiple newcomers. We keep using new technology. We keep uh, challenging new technology with trials and scientific evaluation to finally improve patient outcomes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. When we started using the far wave catheter for PFA ablation, we had the idea of adapting to the versatility of the catheter, to the simplicity of the catheter, uh, creating a very streamlined, very straightforward procedure. We called it 5S. The first S is safety. Safety is the most important factor. We haven't seen a single permanent phrenic nerve palsy in our center and we haven't seen a single lesion in the esophagus due to the ablation procedure. The Fairwave catheter is single shot. It's two more S. <laughs> uh, the whole procedure is simplified, meaning that we don't use 3D mapping. We don't use other catheters other than a coronary sinus catheter. And um, we also used sedation-only protocols using propofol to perform a pulmonary vein isolation procedure. And uh, that, of course, adds to the simplicity of the whole approach. So that's 5S, safe and simple, single shot pulmonary vein isolation with sedation only. Adapting the catheter configuration to the individual anatomy is a unique feature. With all other catheters, you have to adapt your approach to the anatomy, but not the catheter. It enables us to take most of the human factor out of the equation, meaning that whether the treatment is delivered at center X or at center Y does matter because the result will be very, very similar. When we started using the system, there had already been a data out that the durability of the pulmonary vein isolation uh, lesion sets were very, very high. And we were a little skeptical if that was really the case. And that's why we now plan to do a, a remapping study on our own patients. And actually we were very surprised. The, the results were confirmed. And we saw that nine out of 10 veins were actually still isolated in repeat procedures in patients with arrhythmia recurrences. So we haven't even included patients who were fine. So that number might even be higher. Hello, guten Tag. Given the fact that with the fair wave catheter, you're creating more or less two rings of lesions around each pulmonary vein, given the more distal basket position and the more proximal flower position, the performance of the catheter in terms of durable pulmonary vein isolation is very, very good. Isoliert. Super. Dankeschön.